Hey everyone, we're still doing wristbands. I have absolutely been kind of having a hoot over watching all of you be into something that I didn't know would be this exciting. Um, there's also a, a whole bunch of you th threw a bunch of clips at me from, you oh, know, TikTok sick. and Twitter oh, and other sick. places where wow. I, apparently this is a way bigger topic than I realized. People, I showed you the twist technique a little bit when I was talking. That's like a big thing with the fabric wristbands. We have done the PVC bands before. We have done the fabric ones. We have not really done these paper ones yet, have we? Uh, this sort of sticky gum adhesive and the way it attaches to the substrate with a piece of pre-scored uh, part of the band. So if you try to pull it apart or lift it apart, it's designed to shred itself. These often have serial numbers. Uh, they, are, they are among the most challenging ones we're gonna try to tackle, but we've got a few different systems. Not least of which, if it's a sticky type adhesive, People said, how about heat, right? Can you use the little flame on that uh, fabric clasp? What about just using heat to soften up the glue? Brilliant idea. Um, you can absolutely try that. I will say you're gonna run into some trouble. Uh, one thing, the bands themselves, I mean, they're sort of a Tyvek type material. It will melt if you use too much heat. But also, when you care about this kind of thing, the bands are usually on you and your body doesn't react very well to heat. How do you blast a heat gun at your own arm without hurting yourself? Well, my friend Ginger came up with a pretty cool concept for that. So these are what are known as pressing sheets. Essentially, it's a very thermally inert barrier that you can put down. If you're doing any kind of heavy duty pressing work, you know, if you're trying to put an applique or an iron on or something on a garment, and you can chop these up, you can rework them into different sizes. And if you could, in theory, make yourself a small segment of it that you could slip under and guard your arm and go to town with a heat gun and try to blast one of these off. Let's try that on camera and see if I hurt myself. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, we can get this side over here. So let's see how well this manages to protect me from the heat gun. Well, I can definitely start to get it off. But we're running into one of the first problems. This Tyvek type material is not suffering the heat nearly as well as my arm is with this heat shield on. My arm's getting pretty toasty too. It is, it is kind of coming up, but we're, we're gonna say this is probably not the best method here. Uh, maybe if I used even more layers of this stuff, I could kind of shield myself even more. Let's, let's try to double it up because that, that wasn't feeling great. <laughs> I do the dumbest shit on this channel for you people. Ah, God damn, <laughs> that is painful. Ah, fuck me. <laughs> no, these, these just get really hot. <laughs> I feel like Seth Green and can't hardly wait. No, 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 no. No, that's not, none of that was a good time. Oh boy, my hand is very red. Okay, so probably not gonna call that a pass. Maybe with enough shielding and, and I, I don't know, maybe with not so hot a heat source, maybe a hair dryer. <laughs> this is, I, it was not the first time I tried this, by the way, just on a tabletop. It's the first time I freaking did it on my arm and probably the last. Uh, but you'll see, I mean, I'll throw in some footage here, right? The, these do melt even when you're trying to get this ripped off. So I think if we're going to break down some adhesive like this, solvent is going to have to be the way to go. So like before, I got a lot of these to play with and I gave them away. So those of you who were getting the plastic wristbands from me, I also shoved these in your envelopes too. So you can definitely have a field day trying this out. Before we get to these though, I think it's fun if we take a minute to just explore more conventional styles of tamper seal. Because this is something that we have covered in many of our classes 
and they a lot of times operate with the same kind of technology. The idea that you have an adhesive and disturbing that adhesive by trying to peel up the seal will in some way either mechanically or will, um, you know, printing wise, optically damage the seal or leave residue on the substrate. Let's, let's apply some of these seals to a variety of different surfaces and see what we could do to try to lift them up, first mechanically and then maybe chemically. All right, so we have these different types of seals all applied to some cardboard, some wood, some you know heavy plastic. Let's see what happens if you just try to pull these up without any special precautions, right? There we go. So, easily marked void, and no real, it's not like you could kind of line this up and push it back down again. And, oh, look, I just covered it back up. No, I mean, it's obvious. You've, you've exposed the inside to the white. You've, you've you know, delaminated this completely. Uh, this one in the middle here has little tiny score marks. So the idea is, if you try to reach in and lift, well, look at that. This is not a seal that I would say is designed for this kind of substrate. Look at that. We could just kind of peel it. And, and of course, I'm rumpling the, the corner a little bit, but with the application of a little more care, I probably would have been able to take that up easily. I wonder if it behaves any better on something like the wood or the plastic. Yeah, it's grabbing the wood a lot more, but not, not a whole lot. <laughs> My God. Does it work better on the plastic? Let's, let's see. No, these seals are just garbage. <laughs> All right, we're learning something already, aren't we? Fascinating. But where I think we'll really see uh, the, the trickiest bits, this is one that I have worked with before in class, these sort of, you know, Xbox warranty kind of seals. And not only does it disturb a lot if you try to peel this up, you get that residue left behind, right? But these are also, in my experience, sensitive to things like heat, sensitive to certain chemicals. And yeah, we are going to have probably the hardest time messing with this one in a moment. So let's try to do that. Let's try, instead of just peeling them back, let's attack some of these seals with some chemicals maybe. And you'll start to see why having a lot of tools in your inventory is a good thing. So yes, this is my Tamper Evident kit. And I have a variety of attack items in here. We're going to start with kind of the basic stuff is just using acetone to try to get underneath as a solvent, be able to dissolve that adhesive and lift it up very gently. And we've seen this before in some of our classes and with Datagram and others. But if I give a little bit of acetone under here, you can see we're already starting to get a pretty good lift. And I think DG and some of the other MFPs would be making fun of me for not doing this very professionally right now. But that's why they are who they are. I am a motherfucking non-professional here. I'm just a guy on the internet. But this is the idea. This is your super secret sauce squirrel, you know, MI6 OSS special services division kind of steal the state secrets and read the envelopes and check out somebody's mail. And as you can see already, back where I started, the cardboard itself is, is getting dry, is letting this adhesive kind of lift while under here, the cardboard won't be too disturbed by the acetone. There we go. And that will dry off pretty effectively just in the atmosphere here. But there we have it. There we have a pretty intact security seal. And this surface, once you give it a minute, that'll dry right out. And we can even just, let's just, you know, apply it to the back side here. Of course, we've got a little bit of extra acetone on the edge there. But we're not trying to be super professional. Yikes, I don't want to get it stuck to my own tongue depressor. So there we go. 
we could apply that on this side. Except look at that, I did, I did discolor it a little bit because I got a little, little happy with the acetone in the end. So controlled, controlled squeeze. Now, if we want to move this seal, well, we've already seen how that's pretty feasible. Well, you know what? The longer I left it on here, it is actually starting to stick. Maybe it just needed some time. So we'll give it a little, a little squirtsy. And that, of course, that gets it right up, yeah. All right. We'll reverse that one over to our other side. A recipe for success there. Now this guy, this is probably going to be the most interesting in my experience. Now I'll probably be able to start smoothly enough. But yeah, I can already see it's kind of happening. What happens to these seals is that they sort of tend to discolor and they don't really, they get a little cloudy, they don't quite look the best when you're done. You can almost see that in there. You can almost see it's gonna look a little shitty when I reapply it over here. You might say, no, come on. I mean, let's look, you got the hologram on it still. It's still a little shiny, but if I compare it to an original, yeah, you see that? It is, it is just a little bit smudgy and cloudy and if somebody knows what they're doing when they're checking these out and wanting to see if anything's been tampered with, they will recognize that, that that is not great. And it's for this reason that we don't always use acetone exclusively for this kind of an attack. In fact, let's do that same thing again, but this time with a different chemical. This is heptane or N-heptane actually is uh, maybe known. Uh, it's one of the principal ingredients in gasoline. Obviously, don't be, uh, you know, if you're gonna be smoking doing this, be using an e-cigarette, I suppose. That is not actual advice. Please probably don't do that either. Uh, I, I asked the internet if I should be wearing gloves while handling N-heptane and boy, did that set off a long thread of helpful advice from very opinionated people. I'm very thankful. Uh, I want to set the best example for all of you. I'll link to the thread down below. You can, you can read all the various opinions and judge for yourself who is right. All right, starting with this seal. Coming in pretty nicely from the start. Some of my colleagues online recommended that I not just wear gloves, but wear a full respirator and gas mask and everything else. Although most of those friends of mine who have respirators and gas masks, half of them are kind of in the tactical LARPing community and half of them are kinksters. So I actually don't have a gas mask for either purpose, but I could easily borrow one if I really felt it necessary. <laughs> And there we are, another really nice lift. And just as before, this will evaporate off pretty effectively. Let's apply it over here. This one, I mean, we did say that this has been on there for kind of quite a while now. I bet it might actually have a little more, yeah, it's got a little more stick but the Heptane is going to make pretty short work of that. And there we are. Again, just got a little bit aggressive with the needle right on the first insertion. So got to get better at that technique. Now here is the interesting one, of course. We've still got our very nice, very crisp tamper seal here. No cloudiness, very visible. Let's see if the N-heptane behaves a little differently than the acetone did. Yeah, look at that. 
crisp, no cloudiness. And if we apply that on this other pad, yeah, almost like it's brand, brand new. Beautiful, beautiful. Let's try the wood. Will heptane get this tr tricky one off the wood? Probably even more easily, it looks like. The wood is a, it's not adhering as well to the wood in general. And let's be honest, how often do you see tamper seals on wood? Yeah, no problem. Let's give it a look on the plastic. Can we even, yeah, we can get under it on the plastic. There you go. Adding a second hard drive or whatever to your Xbox back in the day. Remember when you people would do that? Yeah. Right on. And of course, plastic is great because it dries perfectly, frankly. And you could reapply that. Okay, two candidates. First up, let's see acetone. By the way, if you're ever working with these, again, we've said if you can flip them inside out, sometimes that's kind of a big help. You can get right in where the adhesion is. And if I give it a little splash, that will start to release the adhesive. You might say, all right, well, this is, this is great. Look at that. No deformation coming apart. Excellent, but look at our wristband. Look at the coloration. It's smearing, it's running. This will melt the ink. And speaking of ink, remember that these have a seal on them. This ink is running right now. In fact, I was really, really tight with the use of the acetone. If I get acetone directly on that, this ink will run, smear, and that'll be toast. Compare with using N-heptane. So, flipperoo. That's coming across. Notice we're not getting discoloration on that wristband. So we're out of there. Blue is still blue. Nothing's running, nothing's messy. And look at our numbers. Crisp as the day they were printed. We can flood this with heptane. Heptane's not gonna make that run. So. If you had to choose a way to tamper with a paper wristband, get it off, get it moved, get it replaced, what do you think? Acetone or heptane? Well, all right, I hope that was fun for everybody. I don't know if you learned anything out of this other than maybe you wanna play with dangerous chemicals, which again, I mentioned this while we were working on these, that there's probably precautions that could be smarter than the ones I'm taking. The internet gave me a lot of advice. I did wear the gloves for you. Uh, I <laughs> I think that I don't know if we're ever going to make something like this available on Red Team Tools, like a tamper kit. A lot of people have asked me over the years about my tamper kit. Maybe one day, maybe not. I, I don't know. I, we got to check with legal. I wanted to give away little vials of heptane and acetone and stuff. Legal told me I cannot do that because for all I know, it's going to be some 13-year-old in a nanny state somewhere like England is like getting this in the mail from me. And that's I don't want to answer those questions to the government. But I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it gives you some thought about not just playing around with wristbands, but playing with proper tamper seals, evidence seals. Uh, it was a lifetime ago that my old you know, training, we used to train under the name The Core Group. Now we're Red Team Alliance, of course. But uh, The Core Group had trainings. We had trainings at Black Hat doing evidence tamper with chemicals like this in the classroom and a lot of other fun stuff with Datagram. Uh, maybe one day we'll come back. I don't know. I don't know if we'll be at Black Hat. It was a niche topic. But maybe you'll see a Red Team Alliance training about this kind of thing. I don't know. If you are interested in this, definitely check out DEF CON. There's a whole village. There's the Tamper Evident Village where they do things of this nature and beyond. Um, I, I think they're still allowed to do that even at the new venue. We'll find out. 
find out. Go find the MFPs and the contests they run, and it's a really good time. I hope you liked this. I certainly did, even though I burned myself and, you know, huffed some things probably in this environment that I shouldn't. But it's all for you. It's for your education. Educational purposes only, kids. Remember, don't uh, light things on fire in your house. If you like this, let me know. If you want me to do more stuff like this, let me know. If there's something else that interests you, let me know. We are just constantly, constantly getting so many questions from people about tools on the site and new equipment that we're making and stuff we're designing. It's we're just so busy all the time now. And every one of you is really patient about it whenever a video takes a little long to get up, when I'm traveling. I'm traveling again next week. I got clients, uh, I gotta be back east, then I'll probably be overseas again, but I'll keep churning stuff out if you keep watching, okay? I hope you enjoy this. Be good to one another. Stay safe out there.